based on the highly acclaimed seven volume Oxford Children's Encyclopedia. Each video in the three volume box set lasts over an hour and includes around 20 topics from acids to evolution, fire to metals and nuclear to x-rays. Hi, I'm John Cantley from Sega Power Magazine. Welcome to our video tips. If you need help, you've come to the right place. We're always reviewing and tipping the latest titles. We selected these games because they're the ones we're getting the most letters about from our readers asking for help. And these are the hottest titles around now. Look at the video box for the counter number you need to fast forward to the game you want tips on. There's loads of information packed in, so you'll want to watch it through more than once. Have fun, go for it. Okay, there's two things you can do to make your missions easier in this explosive title. First thing is to get yourself a decent turbo joystick, the game's actually designed to be used with one, and the next is to enter a password code to give yourself two extra lives. Still, if you're feeling really hard done by, just punch in B Q Q Q A E Z to start the game with ten Apaches, enter the code, exit to the main menu, and go for it. Extra lives. There's loads to be found in later levels, but just the one in the first mission. You'll find it in the southeastern part of the map. You'll find a downed F-15 Tomcat in the northwest corner. In the next level, it's worth an extra life, but you'll get this time around as a pilot who needs rescuing. Right in the middle of the map is where you'll locate the speed winch. There's an attack sequence that works every time on the airports. The air defense is heavy, so come in from the south and blast the first rapier you come across with a single hellfire. Then circulate round the perimeters using clusters of hydras to waste anti-aircraft emplacements. Now just pick up the main man from the lower of the two HQs to reveal the whereabouts of your spy. Fly northwest, drop off your co-pilot, blow up the surrounding weaponry, and before you know it, you're on to level two. In the northeast of the map, you'll find another crashed F-15 Tomcat. This one's got an extra life, and Jake, the best co-pilot there. The speed winch this time is located in the white building to the west. The power station can pose problems on this level, simply because there's a huge number of small targets instead of just a few big ones. First, check the state of your armor, and then get stuck in with all guns blazing. The rest is all basic gameplay in level two. Just follow the missions as they come, and you can't go too wrong. This is a start code for level three that'll see you starting with Jake well and intact. Start by rescuing the TV crew from the besieged city center. Drop them off by their studio, but remember to take out the snipers before you land. Still, just fly around and extract your revenge. The extra life's down south under a sand dune, but be careful, get the wrong dune and you're in for a nasty surprise. Luckily, Jake's really accurate on the guns. Just make sure you're quick enough to stop the ICBMs.
There's only one radar installation in the third level. It's just below the main HQ to the north, and it's really easy to knock out. This will make life much easier. The speed winch is in the city centre. Grab it fast before unwanted company arrives. When trying to locate the precise area of missile silos on the beach, use your chain gun as a feeler. You'll know you've hit the right dune when the gun noise gets harsh and nasty. Just keep firing. The Madman's Yacht is your first encounter with enemy helicopters. Use four hydras and two hellfires to guarantee their death, then blast the yacht open with your gun. Get as close to the yacht as possible to rescue the hostages, and don't bother chasing the Madman because you can't touch him. As soon as you're full, fly off to base but come back real quick as the hostages can't last long in that water. The embassy rescue is dead simple. Just maneuver behind all the helicopters to blast them, then blow down the gate to the embassy to get the bus moving. Now just keep ahead of the bus to destroy tanks and obstacles before they get to it, and you shouldn't have too many problems. Blast down the barriers to keep the bus moving, and then open the bridge over the ditch by wasting the sentry box next to it. After that, rocket launchers will come straight for you, so stay alert and get them as quickly as possible. You'll start to run out of fuel by the end of your mercy run. There's a full canister waiting just down by the aircraft, as is your co-pilot, Jake, who is driving the bus. Pick him up, and it's all over the final level. You've made it. Remember, you can boot up your lives by entering either of the cheat codes and get to it. There's two radar sites in this level, one to the northwest and the other directly north from that one. Pound the defenses and grab the ammo. There's an absolute deluge of extra lives in level four. The first one's in the northern sector of the main city section, and the second's directly below that in amongst the snipers and garbage trucks. And don't forget, never blast a garbage truck until you know exactly what it's got in the back. Otherwise, it's game over. The third and final extra life is in the top half of the northern city sector. Draw the enemy's missiles to make them blast a building, but remember to get the hell out of their way when they have. OK, you've blasted your way through to the end, and it's the final showdown with General Kilbarba's nuclear bomber. Make sure you're well stocked with weapons, then use your guns to destroy the enemy without hitting your captured co-pilot. Next, use your guns and hydras to blast a hole in the side of the plane. Stop as soon as the hole appears, then maneuver the chopper as close as you can to rescue your co-pilot. Now blast the tanks moving in for the kill and start on the airplane. Remember, it takes 3,000 points of damage, so use everything you've got and stock up on the weapons next to the airfield. Main thing is not to panic. You've got more time than you think. Now get to it. Throughout the land, you'll find rock piles which contain bottles of health fluid and keys. To enter the first level, just run right past the entrance marked home, punch the rock pile, and use the key you find at the door. Once into the caves, make your way down on the left side of the level until you come across the chest containing the high jump fluid. This is your key to an extra credit. Carry on making your way down to the left, jump a small gap in the floor and get ready to face off against the Keeper of the Orb, your first real boss. This guy's a real softy. Just duck down and punch the orb to destroy him. After 10 hits, it's all over. Now just drop down to the next chest. In it, you'll find a file of green potion. These are worth saving till the later levels as they'll fully restore your hit points. Up to the top right now and you'll come across a red potion. These restore your hit points by five, so take them whenever you think you need them. 
Go up that ladder and jump those rocks. In the top right hand of the level now, and it's your first boss, the Death Skeleton. This bloke takes seven hits from the orb, his only surprise being that he comes straight for you on his fourth charge. Just keep throwing that orb and it's lights out ugly. If you need some more lives at this stage, you're either completely hopeless or stocking up for later. Use the high jump potion to propel you onto a secret ledge to the left of the level to grab a one-up. On your way to face the death skeleton, take care to avoid these lethal water drops. They all fall in sequence, so it's pretty easy. And then grab the golden key for the end of level two from the bottom left of the screen. See you in the next level. First things to do in level two are to grab the time and space transporter from the base of the first ladder and then run left and punch the switch. Now up the ladder and through these bouncing eyeballs to reach the square key, which is your ticket into the castle in level four. Don't worry too much about the flying demons, but uh, do try and make the jumps. Anyway, having got the key, make your way down the ladder on the far right of the top platform. Fight your way left and grab the invincibility potion, which you'll want to save for level four. There is a green key down to the bottom left, but as it doesn't do anything, you're best off saving your energy and making your way onto the next boss. There's two ways of tackling this guy. You can either do it the slow way by hitting and ducking, or you can just get stuck in and lose a few hit points in the process. Ah, what the hell, just go for it. Use the golden key to open the well, and on you go. Back up above ground, things are getting all rather grim as you make your way to the right. Punch all the rock piles to grab potions and power-ups, and return to the well with the coin for an extra credit. Remember not to drink the blue or cyan potions, as they'll knock a load of hit points off. Dodge and kick the rockets, and before you know it, you'll be facing off against the King Gargoyle. You must have the square key, because he'll be taking you to the castle where you'll be meeting the final bosses. And as they say, stay tuned for the next episode. The version on the Game Gear was so good, we'll be showing you guys the same way home. It's actually tougher on the handheld version. You start in the future. Pound the surface hunter killers with grenades, then move underground and run left, blasting terminators as you go. Game Gear owners, you'll find the machine gun top left, mega drivers bottom left. Just pound the robot 15 times and there it is. Now let rip. Now make your way over to the right of the level. Game Gear owners will need to pick up the grenades from the bottom left so they can blast open doors. Then pick up the machine gun, yes, again, and trip the explosives at the reactor. Mega Drive owners just have to set their explosives and then start running like hell. You've only got 45 seconds to get out of there. Run back up and to the left to find your way back onto the surface. The Terminator are blissfully unaware that the whole place is about to blow, and boom, you've made it. Los Angeles, here we come. The main thing here is to stay high up on the rooftops. There's less trouble from the punks and the cops, and progress is a lot safer and quicker. So get up there. Once in the nightclub, you'll meet Arnold for the first time. Hey, relax, it's no big thing. Just whip out your shotgun, duck down below his machine pistol fire, and let him have it. Get him down three times and you can pass through unscratched, but just don't hang around. Rolled by the cops and you've got to bust your way out of jail. Again, it's just a question of getting them before they get you, especially with the game gear, as once they touch you, you lose control over your character and you don't get the boost bottles. Your second meeting with the Terminator is much tougher, as there's cops and punks coming straight for you as well as him. The trick is to fall back and eliminate all others before starting on Arnold. Again, three good falls is all it takes. Fight your way through, and you'll be ready to face the Terminator in all his naked glory.
Now just make it up the stairs for your rendezvous with Sarah Connor and you're on your way. This level is just a maze. It's best to keep the Terminator in your view, as when he goes off screen he'll reappear, usually right in front of you. So you want to play a game of chicken, keeping him as close as you dare and blasting him when things get a little too close. The route you take is very specific. Get it wrong and you'll end up in a dead end. Now lure him into the hydraulic press, shoot him one more time and the press will close automatically, meaning the death of the Terminator and the end of all your problems. Game over. For a level select, use the joypad to make the word abracadabra, using right and down on the D-pad for the R's and D's. The lead guitarist will grin, and then press A, B and C together with start to access the cheat. Use button A and up and down to select your start level. Once on the move, always use rocks to protect your thick skull from monkeys in the palm trees. Just remember that you can't belly punch when you're carrying rocks. You can use the bigger rocks as stepping stones to clear thorn bushes and just bosh the pterodactyls for a free ride. Again, use the rocks to protect your head. Now grab a free ride from a passing brontosaurus. The first boss is a complete walkover. Just wait for the dinosaur to charge, then scuttle down and retrieve the rock just below the platform. Rush up out of harm's way, and then throw the rock straight onto its big dumb bag. Easy. Watch out for ghoulies appearing suddenly from the floor in the second level. You can squash them with the rocks, but be sure to get your timing right. As before, use the rocks to cover yourself from the flaky roof of the caverns, and flatten snakes to provide yourself with a handy jumping platform. Jump up onto this platform, and then push the rock over the edge to reveal an extra energy icon. There it is. I just mind these flying pigs. And there goes the snake. The saber-tooth boss is really easy too, once you've got the technique. Bash him twice when you first appear, then follow him down below the platform to corner him to the left. And wham, 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 it's all over for him. Use rocks underwater to stabilize yourself on level three. Remember that you'll have to come up for air pretty frequently, but the crabs can get you while you're toting rocks around. The walrus boss in this level is the hardest of the lot. You're gonna take a few hits here, but get into his head or stomach and bash him as much as possible. And look out for the bubbles he blows. You'll slide all over the place without a rock to stabilize you on this level. Now bash the woolly rhino to get a lift skywards, but watch out for the snowballers, irritating creatures if ever you saw them. Best move is to either avoid them altogether or try and time it right so you can bash them senseless. This is an example of how not to do it. Remember to use the animal catapults you come across for the right effect, be it frog, mammoth or crocodile. Get some serious air. The woolly mammoth boss is pretty simple. Just jump up and bash the base of his trunk, then run left and wait for the snowballs to fall. Get left to avoid his hoover-like sucking, then turn around and bosh him again. Mind his tusks and take your time. 
onto the graveyard level and you've got to use the skulls, tongues and fat dinosaurs to progress towards the huge mouth at the end of the first level. Look out for some of the small green creatures, as they'll sometimes release devils to pursue you after their death. Very antisocial. Once inside the monster's rather disgusting stomach, it's best to avoid the lower path as it's full of evil gastric juices like this one. Aim for the higher path to claim more heart icons and just use common sense. Before you know it, you'll be through to the final boss. And here he is, ugly brute but easy to beat. Just wait for him to snap at you, then retaliate with all legs kicking. Gary Gritter can only stand 10 hits or so, and it's soon all over. Where's your girl then? The first thing you need in Prince of Persia is as many health potions as you can find. The next thing you'll need is your sword, which you'll find at the end of the first level. Use the cautious step by holding down button one and get stuck straight in when fighting the guards. The early ones are very easy anyway. You can avoid fighting here by clambering out straight away. And get round spikes by jumping just at the right time or moving here extremely cautiously. This is the secret room in level two. Time your jumps to make it through the guillotine doors in one piece and use thrusting jabs to knock the skeleton off the edge in level three. Mind the spikes you'll encounter after the first guard and then jump through the mirror to reveal your evil twin. And there he is again. It'll all come to a head later on in the game. But this is as far as level 6 goes because your twin shuts the door, leaving you to grab at ledges in the next level. Quickly grab hold and climb up. It's all plain sailing after this part. There's a secret room here. Just bang the roof to reveal its location. Now step in the right direction and climb up. Get the door switches in the right order. And uh, as you'll see, some are trickier than others. Over the edge, through the guillotine and just jump for it. Yeah, it's sweaty stuff. These double doors are no problem. Just time it right. Now! Just to the right, you'll find this secret room. It's another health restoring potion. The return journey is more of the same. Just get that timing right. The main thing to get right here are the crumbling steps. A double jump will see you through. Just along from this is a guard with a secret room above him. Dispose of the guard, then locate the room. At last, the switch for the main door. Just don't relax yet, okay? Just make your way back and on you go.
Level 12, the most treacherous yet. Just jump long and quick to avoid the crumbling floor and locate the secret room in the top right of the level. There's much life restoring fluid here and you're gonna need it too. Hey, it's yourself, but don't fight. If you do, he'll just kill you. So put your sword away and step into yourself. The final fight. The best move with Jafar is to thrust while standing still or retreating, and you'll get him every time. And there she is. Take it away, Romeo. There's a code to give you extra shooting pair in this football sim. Just enter three shredded wheat on the password screen and off you go. The best formations to use are the 424 and 325 patterns. Once you're in possession, use a swerving technique to avoid tacklers. They'll just slide past. The same works with the goalie. Swerve at the last second, he'll dive, leaving you to dribble the ball into the net. And the best place to run is along either side of the pitch. Use a long overhead shot to drop the ball into the net. The goalie won't stand a chance. Again, up the side and there's less players to tackle you. Now hit that cross shot. Buzz is a bit of a bulldozer, really. For speed and versatility, Ty's the man you want in a tight scrape. He doesn't have to deliver a mean kick, either. To dispatch with the executioner, just use the flying kick, then pick him up and throw him around. He's just a big purse when you know how. First, weaken Southside Jim with all the boxes and knives lying around. Then finish him off with flying kicks and straight punches. These are your bread and butter moves and they work every time. To lay down the law in the grudge match, three scissor kicks is all it should take. And that's it. Again, flying kicks and punches work best with Angel, but pick up the pad bill as soon as possible for some real good fun. Bar stores and pool cues do a lovely job on CC Rider. Wipe up with some flying kicks and punches and it's soon all over. <laughs> Chainman Eddie's a bit of a tough guy. Try and stun him with some flying kicks and throwing knives, then lay into him when he's on the floor. Use the cartwheel to dodge out of his reach. Match six is heavy metal. Use anything that's lying around and stay on your toes to keep out of trouble. Use flying kicks when you can and high punches. Hey, it's Angel again. And it's the same technique as before, only a load tougher this time. Don't give her any second chances and just get in there. 
Mad Miles has one tough ombre. He's really mean up close. Use the sticks lying around to knock the hell out of him and just keep swiping. If you do find yourself in close combat, it's best to get the hell out of there. Just one bout from the championship match, and this time there's two Chainman Eddies. So get a rhythm going and use the power pills sensibly. Try and use anything lying to hand, and those flying kicks will still do the business, even on these guys. The Masked Warrior, the main man himself. Once he eventually gets off his pedestal, use all the knives and boxes lying around, then collect the power bill for some extra punch. Lay into him when he's on the floor, and it'll all be over sooner than you thought. Hey, that wasn't so tough. Choose Buffalo or Chicago for their running plays, Minnesota or Los Angeles for their all-round abilities, or Washington and Oakland for their total passing dominance. Straight into the kickoff return, and the best move here is to run to the side of the screen, and then use the B and C buttons as best you can. The best all-round offensive play is the flood left shotgun option. Snap the ball, drop back, and throw it to the middle man. Works every time. Set. Hut, 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 hut. And for those of you who missed it, here it is again. Same team, same charge. Provided the receiver's on his spot, you can't miss and any cornerback who hustles you will just get done for pass interference. Set, red, 20, hut, hut, hut. For goal line pushes of three yards or less, select the quarterback sneak and post him straight through behind the center. Now just watch him dance. Set. 28! Hut! 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 Touchdown! For the extra point, start pressing C and keep tapping C until the kicker does his stuff. Minimal power but maximum guarantee of success. When it's time for you to kick off, call an audible and select C on the joypad. Now use maximum power on the kick and pull the direction to the right of the screen. You're now kicking into the area most covered by your players. Now crunch them. First down. On defense, you're nearly always safe selecting a nickel read defense, as it gives you the best coverage against both running and passing plays. Select a linebacker and place him near the line of scrimmage in a position to sack the quarterback. You won't always get him, but they'll never get very far. Set. Hut. Hut. Back on offense, and the best running players are normal near toss right. With Buffalo's number 34 running back and some fancy finger work, you can go a long way with this play. Set. 28. If the clock's catching up with you and you're pushed for time, select a normal run and shoot up hook play. It's quick, clean, and it gets results. And it's also great for showing off. Set, red, hut, 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 hut. 
post it straight down the centre. There are seven different sports here to test your joypad thumping skills to the limit, ranging from the usual track and field events to the more offbeat sports, such as diving and archery. You can take part in a mini Olympics, or you can go the whole hog and enter the lot. Don't worry if you're not Linford Christie quite yet though, because there's an opportunity to train at each event. After the opening ceremonies, go straight on to the 100 metres. This event is easy. Just place the controller on a flat surface and slide your index finger back and forth between buttons A and B. Depending on the size of your hand, you may find it easier to use your index and second finger side by side. Whatever, you'll get some good speed with this technique. Practice is the most important factor in the pole vault. You may find it easier to place your controller on a flat surface and slide your index finger between buttons A and B. Then use your other hand to control the jump. Don't bother pressing down as the computer does it for you. In the hammer throw, use the AB button technique to work up speed and then get your release point just right. Aim for over 70 meters. In the archery, you may have trouble using the technique described in the manual. As an alternative, try using short control taps on the D-pad to guide the sight towards the center of the target. This will prevent you from overcompensating, but watch your time limit and the wind. The main trick in mastering the diving is to carefully watch the demonstrations. At first, stick to simple dives as a 10 from one of these is just as good as one from a more complex maneuver. In time, you'll be able to master the most complex moves from double twist to high toes. The key to success in the swimming is restraint. Watch out you don't go before the light changes because three full starts and you're disqualified. Try to maintain a steady rhythm for the first three lengths, staying just in front of the main pack. Use the speed of the other swimmers to judge the amount of effort you put into swimming yourself. Then part way down the final length, increase your speed and sprint for the finish. Exactly where you begin this final burst of speed depends upon how much energy you have left. Now you're on the final lap, so open it out and go for it. In the 110 meter hurdles, use the same button technique as for the 100 meter sprint. Only this time, turn the joypad round to give you decent access to the jump button. When jumping the hurdles, it's best to jump a little early than too late. Keep going and you should get a decent result. Straight into the warehouse, and the first bogey worth any notice is the forklift driver. 
But he's simple. Just get behind him and pound him with webs and punches to bring it all to a rapid end. Aha, get a quick shot of Doc Ock, then chuck a load of webs to keep those arms of his tied up. Then quickly get in close and pound him with flying kicks and punches. He's a bit puny, really. Take a quick photo of the lizard creature, then start tossing webs for all you're worth. While he's tied up, use a crouching kick to sap his strength. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's all over real quick. You'll find the key to the bottom right of the level, so get in there and get out as quick as you can. There's a load of dead spiders at the bottom of that pit. There's a series of switches you've got to press before you can face off against Electro, the boss with a head full of volts. He's really persistent and doesn't mind at all zapping you with a thousand amps. But as before, the trick is to tie him up with webs and then kick the hell out of him. Now get to it. And now go and fetch the key, which is located above the electric barriers high overhead. They turn on and off in sequence, but uh, if you push for time, don't worry too much about that. Just get up there and go for it. On level four, you'll find the Hobgoblin, a rather strange boss who floats around lobbing bombs in a really annoying way. Just climb to the top of the tallest building to be at the same level as him and let rip with a broadside of webs and kicks. Simple, eh? Now just nip off and get the key off Venom, a true pune if ever there was one. This key will let you through onto level 5, where you have to bash your way past Doc Ock again and then go and defuse the bomb that the Kingpin's been holding the city to ransom with. There's a specific sequence, but it's enough just to swipe at all the firing pins until the thing shuts down. Finally, it's old Fatso himself. What can I say? More webs, more kicks, and it's all over. Depressingly simple, eh, Spidey fans? Since you have to qualify on all five tracks, you may as well start with one you feel comfortable on and take note of what the other riders have to say. As soon as the race starts, take a swing at Punch Fodder Rude Boy. He's sad and pathetic, but it makes starts more fun. After that, you should try and bash your way through the first six bikes before half a mile's are left. It'll set you up better for the later half of the race. Small crests in the road can give you a big advantage. Lay the bike on its side to get bigger air and use cars as shields when possible. The best road position is in the middle, where you can, you can react quickly either one way or the other. It's worth taking evasive action to avoid oil patches. The loss of traction and speed will have you off and losing places before you know it. And this is what happens when you try overtaking over a blind crest. Sometimes it's worth the risk, but more often than not, there'll be a Volvo waiting for you. If you're in a hurry to qualify, just finish the first race in fifth position. 
Then go to the password screen and change the first five digits on your new password to 1111. Now go back to the race screen and you'll see you've finished all the tracks in first place. Race one more track, finish in the top three and ta-da! There's Natasha giving you the come on for the next level. You'll need a bigger bike soon though. Without a doubt, the best all-round team here is the Soviet Union. They're offensive, fast and aggressive, and the goalie is damn good at his job. Just check out these stats for confirmation. At the face-off, don't make a move until just after the ref drops the puck. Pull down on the joypad and press B to take possession. A sure way to draw the goalie away from the goal mat is to go around the back of the net, bring it around the front and then slam the puck down past the side of his legs. Another method is to guide your player straight down the middle of the pitch, slow right down in front of the goalie and post it between his legs using a passing shot. This one will only work if you're up there by yourself, otherwise you just pass to another teammate. Fighting's dead simple. Just move in and duff him with a high punch, then move directly back again. He'll swipe vainly at thin air, so get stuck back in and reward him for his troubles. He'll be on his butt before he knows what hit him. To take possession when you're playing defense, just wait for one of the opponent's players to make a break for it, then move in and press C at the last second for a body slam. It's fast and effective when you get it right. the game of the movie, and we'll be showing you the full way around next time. The action's all set on the hellish prison colony Ripley finds herself stranded on, and it's fast frenetic stuff. Unlike the movie, the range of weapons is huge, with everything from 30mm grenade launchers to flamethrowers on hand. It's vital to rescue all the prisoners in the right order, otherwise you'll end up finding yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. The maze of tunnels and platforms is enormous. There are 15 levels in all, with a host of prisoners to rescue in each section before the alien face habits get to them. You're up against the clock the whole way, and the aliens are out there to make your mission as hard as possible. We like this game. It's got a huge game playing area, the animation and graphics are well smooth, and the action doesn't slow up for a second. It's available right now from Acclaim, and it's definitely worth checking out. Think you're ready to face the Queen Alien? Brand new from Domark, Bond is finally set to make it onto a Mega Drive near you as from December this year. Featuring characters and music lifted straight from the best of the Bond films, the game has four levels packed with action, guns and girls, just like any self-respecting James Bond title. Uh. 
On your way, you'll face up against old Bond arch rivals, including Oddjob and Jaws. Just try and get him before he gets you. Missile loaded platforms of some madman's yacht to the nuclear power cells where Oddjob does his hat throwing trick. The heat is on 007 the whole way. Jaws makes a couple of anti social appearances too, the only way past him being a full clip and a lot of cool. As well as the usual 9mm Beretta, you're also equipped with a load of grenades. Use them wisely. With animation from the same people who did Prince of Persia, you can expect some pretty stunning movements, and you'd be right. From the way he bangs fresh clips into his Beretta to the way he hides behind doorways, Bond is beautifully animated. Hot stuff and no mistake. as current as Alien 3, but it's another movie game release set over seven frantic levels as you take on the part of Detective Harrigan in his search for a new killer in town. With graphic stills lifted straight out from the film and the Predator making regular appearances from the side of the screen, the pressure's on to get to your hostages before his crosshairs do. The game uses a pretty unusual method of diagonal control, which takes some getting used to, but the action is pure arcade classic, and the number of different weapons and challenges you face on your mission is huge. From the slaughterhouse to the streets of gang ruled Los Angeles, you just gotta keep blasting to survive. Later levels will see you facing off against the predators themselves. But they're not that tough. The final levels see you getting ever closer to the Predator and his ship, with the last screens actually set aboard his craft as you battle through to face the final boss. It's going to be available any day now, and we'll be showing you the full solution in Sega Power Tips Part 2. Now that'll be something worth waiting for. No, we didn't tell you everything, but we reckon we told you enough to get through. If you'd like us to feature a game that you're stuck with, write to us here at Sega Power Video Tips, and we'll try and put it on. If you thought this did the business, wait until you see Tips Part 2. Catch you later.